What if the earth could speak? What if a mountain whispered its intentions long before it moved, long before ash blackened the skies and forests were leveled in the blink of an eye? Would we know how to listen, or would its language be too cryptic, too deeply buried in vibrations and subterranean groans for us to decode? Mount St. Helens, the restless giant of the Pacific Northwest, has spoken before. In May of 1980, its voice was not a whisper, but a scream. Fifty-seven people lost their lives as the mountain's northern flank collapsed, releasing a lateral blast so violent it flattened trees across 500 square kilometres. That event was not entirely silent in its lead-up. For weeks, hundreds of earthquakes rattled its slopes, and a bulge grew visibly on its north side. Scientists watched, unsure how close the end game was. When the final explosion came, the signs in hindsight were obvious, but the precise moment remained unknowable until it struck. And that is the enduring riddle. Volcanoes reveal themselves through swarms of earthquakes, jets of volcanic gas and subtle swelling of their flanks. But which tremors matter? Which cracks in the earth herald doom? And which pass like harmless sighs of the crust? Every mountain is different, every sequence unique. Some eruptions are preceded by weeks of violent seismic unrest, others by only hours of nearly silent pressure build. To a human observer, the signals blur together. The whispers are indistinguishable from noise. Deep within Mount St. Helens lies a magma chamber, a cauldron of molten rock fed by the descent of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath the North American continent. As that oceanic slab sinks, it melts and releases gases. The lighter buoyant melt rises, pooling under the stratovolcano. In the right conditions it intrudes upward, fracturing the rock above. These fractures are earthquakes, tiny staccato notes in the mountain's hidden symphony. The chamber itself is capped by stiff, silica-rich magma that traps gases like a cork on a shaken bottle. When it gives way, the result is explosive. This much geologists know. What they have long struggled with is timing. Mount St. Helens has erupted dozens of times over the past 4,000 years, sometimes with pyroclastic flows that race down its flanks faster than a human could run, sometimes with slow-growing lava domes, sometimes with lahars that transformed river valleys into torrents of ash and mud. Each sequence is a puzzle with familiar pieces arranged in unfamiliar ways. The mountain never repeats itself exactly. So how do you tell when the next blast is coming? Scientists planted seismometers on its slopes. They added GPS sensors to track whether the mountain was swelling. They pointed spectrometers to measure sulfur dioxide gas belching into the air. They built a vast web of instruments to catch any clue, but one truth always haunted their efforts. There is no single sign, no universal alarm bell. A swarm of quakes might mean magma is rising, or it might not. A bulge might herald a dome-building eruption, or it might subside without incident. The earth gives mixed signals, and nature refuses to simplify them for us. The greatest mystery is hidden in the seismic records. Every eruption Mount St. Helens has ever produced left behind a signature in those waveforms. Before 1980, before 2004, before smaller eruptions in the intervening decades, the mountain shook in ways slightly different from normal. If those signals could be sifted, if patterns invisible to the naked eye could be teased from the noise, Perhaps the whispers would finally be intelligible. Perhaps the mountain was not mute at all, but speaking in a dialect too subtle for us to understand. The question haunted volcanology for decades. Could there be a hidden grammar in those seismic murmurs? Could days of tiny tremors encode a countdown? Was there a way to know with confidence that the restless magma below would break free not in years or weeks, but in days? For years the answer was no. Seismologists tracked the number of earthquakes, their depths, their magnitudes. They charted swarms as they rose from deep beneath the crust to shallow clusters near the summit. They watched spectral content shift from brittle fracture quakes to longer period tremors linked to fluids. Yet still the eruptions caught them in the fog of uncertainty. Human pattern recognition was not enough. Then, quietly, an experiment began. Decades of data from Mount St. Helens were fed into a system designed not to interpret in the traditional sense, but to recognize. A system that would not ask why a tremor looked the way it did, only whether that shape, that frequency, that burst of energy had ever preceded an eruption before. 
The raw data stretch back across the violent events of the late 20th century and into the early 21st. Every quake, every tremor, every restless murmur was catalogued and labelled unrest, pre-eruption, eruption. As the system learned, it began to notice things no human analyst had fully seen. Bursts of high-frequency earthquakes gave way to lower, more resonant signals. The statistical shape of the waveforms shifted, spikes grew sharper, energy accumulated. Subtle frequency drifts whispered of magma cracking its way upward. The mountain's hidden code began to take form. The researchers tested their creation against known eruptions, and time after time it recognized the prelude days before the climactic event. At least three days before the mountain roared, the system flagged the change. Its confidence climbed from uncertainty to near certainty as the eruption approached. In more than nine out of ten cases, the prediction was correct. Only later did the team fully appreciate what had been built. In essence, they had created an ear more sensitive than any human ear, one attuned to the faintest inflections in the mountain subterranean language. Where people heard noise, this system heard intent. And the name of this ear? Artificial intelligence. When the word artificial intelligence is finally spoken, it feels almost anticlimactic. The mystery is not a ghost, not an omen from the mountain, but a machine, a model trained to hear patterns too faint for us to discern. Yet the deeper one looks, the more fascinating the revelation becomes. For what the algorithm has uncovered is not a trick of mathematics. It is a geological truth written into the ground a physical story carried by waves of rock. To understand why this matters, one must descend into the restless mechanics of Mount St. Helens. At its heart is magma, born where the Juan de Fuca plate is consumed beneath the continent. As this slab dives into the mantle, water and carbon dioxide are squeezed from it like fluids from a sponge. Those volatiles lower the melting point of mantle rock, producing buoyant pockets of melt that rise. Over thousands of years, these coalesce into a magma reservoir beneath the volcano, a body rich in silica that behaves like sticky glue compared to runnier basaltic melts elsewhere in the world. That sticky quality is critical. It traps gases, building pressure. Imagine steam sealed inside a thick paste. It cannot escape gently, so pressure ratchets higher until the rock fractures. Every crack, every small quake is a note in a growing chorus. When the threshold is reached, the chamber shudders and an eruption begins. Sometimes the result is a catastrophic lateral blast, as in 1980. Other times, magma extrudes as a dome, like a slow-moving glacier of molten rock. In all cases, the prelude is written in the way the earth shakes. Seismic waves are of many kinds. There are volcano tectonic earthquakes, sharp, brittle breaks that register at high frequencies. There are long-period events, born when gases and fluids resonate in newly opened cracks. There is volcanic tremor, a continuous hum that speaks of magma churning in the conduit. A skilled seismologist can pick out these types by eye, but the boundaries blur. What distinguishes a mere swarm from the prelude to eruption is not one event, but how many, how often, how their character changes over hours and days. The patterns are subtle, cumulative, layered like a symphony of overlapping instruments. This is where the algorithm proved its worth. The researchers trained it to distill each slice of seismic data into numbers, features. Among these were measures of energy, telling how much ground motion was packed into the signal, frequency indices, describing whether high or low pitches dominated, and statistical markers such as kurtosis, which reveal whether the waveform was smooth or spiky. Think of it as converting the raw sound of the mountain into sheet music, every tremor reduced to notes on a page. By sliding a time window across decades of records, the system produced millions of such numerical fingerprints, each tagged with whether the volcano was quiet, preparing, or already erupting. The artificial intelligence, a neural network, combed through this archive and learned which fingerprints tended to appear in which states. It did not know magma, but it came to recognize the fingerprints of magma's approach. What it found was striking. In the days before eruption, energy values climbed as swarms intensified. Frequencies shifted as the resonance of cracks changed. Kurtosis rose as sudden spikes punctuated the noise, each spike perhaps a gas bubble bursting or a fracture opening. 
These shifts were not always visible to the human eye, but to the algorithm they were undeniable. When tested against known eruptions, the Great May Blast of 1980, the dome-building episodes of 2004 and others in the record, it consistently raised an alarm at least three days beforehand. 95% accuracy does not mean perfection. It means that in 19 out of 20 cases, the system correctly identified the approach of eruption without confusing quiet periods for dangerous ones. What is remarkable is not only the success rate, but the timing. A three-day lead time may not sound long, but in volcanic terms, it is a gulf. Three days is enough to mobilize emergency plans, to warn communities downstream of Lahar pathways, to prepare air traffic control for ash hazards. In 1980, the blast came on a Sunday morning. If an AI like this had existed then and given warning on Thursday, perhaps the logging crews and campers in the woods could have been spared. The implications deepen when one considers the unique nature of Mount St. Helens. Its conduit is not wide open like that of Mount Etna, where magma can flow freely. Instead, it is often plugged, its throat choked by solidified dacite. Such a system behaves like a sealed chamber. Gases cannot escape, so pressure builds gradually. That slow build-up leaves fingerprints lasting days, even weeks. The AI confirmed this. In closed conduit volcanoes, the pre-eruptive state lingers, providing a window for recognition. In open systems, the warning time collapses to hours. Mount St. Helens, with its sticky magma and plugged conduit, thus becomes an ideal candidate for such predictive listening. Yet the achievement must be viewed with humility. The model was tested in hindsight against data where the outcome was already known. Forecasting forward in real time is harder. The earth is noisy and not every swarm leads to eruption. The risk of false alarms remains and the danger of missed signals lurks. Moreover, each volcano is its own creature. What is true for Mount St. Helens may not translate directly to Mount Rainier, to Shasta, or to distant Etna. Training must be repeated, models tuned to each mountain's dialect. Still, the principle stands. The Earth speaks through physics, and the key is not to interpret each sound in isolation, but to hear the ensemble. Artificial intelligence, at its best, is not replacing the geologist. It is giving them an extra ear one that never tires, one that can weigh a thousand subtle shifts at once. Where the human eye might overlook a small but telling drift in frequency, the algorithm notes it, remembers it, and weighs it against history. The deeper mystery, perhaps, is philosophical. We have built a tool that can listen more keenly than us, yet what it hears is only what the earth has always said. The mountain does not know it is being studied. Its magma rises, its gases expand, its rocks fracture as they always have. The whispers were always there. The only difference now is that we are finally equipped to hear them. And that raises the most haunting question of all. If one volcano's secrets can be unlocked this way, how many more are waiting? How many mountains across the Pacific Ring of Fire are speaking right now? their subtle tremors weaving a story we have yet to learn. Could the disasters of the future, the ash plumes, the collapsed skylines, the drowned valleys, be foreseen not by human instinct but by machines attuned to the Earth's buried music? The work at Mount St. Helens does not promise certainty. It offers something more fragile but no less valuable. Probability, confidence, lead time, a chance to move from reactive to proactive. A chance, however slim, to hear the scream of a volcano not in the instant it explodes, but in the whispers days before. And that is why the story matters. Not because artificial intelligence is fashionable, but because beneath the algorithms lies geology itself, immutable and relentless. Pressure builds, rocks break, magma rises, the signals are real, and now perhaps they are decipherable. The mountain will erupt again. The question is not if, but when and whether this time we will be listening closely enough to act. So the mystery closes where it began, with a voice in the earth, faint but insistent, waiting to be heard. Artificial intelligence did not invent that voice, it only tuned the receiver. The rest is up to us, to heed the warning, to prepare, and to respect the power of the restless ground beneath our feet. If this exploration into the hidden language of Mount St. Helens gripped your imagination, don't let it end here. 
Make sure to like, share and subscribe, and don't forget to tap that hype icon so this story of Earth and Machine can be pushed into a wider audience. The mountain is whispering, let's make sure the world is listening.